Hi, I'm Sana and I'm taking a break from covering pop culture here at AJ+. I'm coming at you from my home just across the river from Washington, D.C. Here I have a lovely view of the Washington Monument and the country collapsing in on itself due to a mismanaged pandemic, an economic crisis that hasn't impacted Wall Street but has left tens of millions unemployed, and a militarized police force brutalizing civilians protesting police brutality. Somehow all of this has led to one of the most overstated and very unnecessary hot takes that the United States is now entering her third world dictatorship years. We are teetering on a dictatorship. Trump is acting like a third world dictator here. Sure, except what's happening in the United States is very uniquely American and what we refer to as the quote third world didn't just happen. Rather, the characteristics that we may assign to so-called third world countries, corruption, authoritarianism, poverty, suppressed civil rights and welfare institutions, emerged because that was by design, messy design, and often American design. First, let's look at the term third world, which is outdated and used as an insult. We got the term from the Cold War, and it was meant to categorize countries that didn't align with either the NATO bloc, aka the First World, or the Soviet bloc, aka the Second World. What did so-called Third World countries call themselves? Um, non-aligned. Yeah, they had a pretty decent and accurate term for themselves that didn't equate billions of people to aliens existing on some other planet. By calling themselves non-aligned, they were declaring an anti-imperialist preference to stay out of Cold War blocs, but they definitely leaned a certain way and that way was red. The term third world then evolved to basically refer to not only countries with histories of colonization, but those that had been pushed into poverty, famine, complete infrastructural decay, corruption, and authoritarianism. In addition to being an imposed term, it also created a poorly defined hierarchy because a third world today implies a second and first world. And not only did the second world disappear about 30 years ago, but are you telling me that the United States and Sweden are equal? <laughs> no. By saying that the United States is now a third world dictatorship because of what we are now witnessing, we are whitewashing the history of violence and destabilization this country's government has administered at home and abroad. After all, who do we think helped put those dictatorships into power? Who do we think has sustained the power of so many of the world's dictatorships? Who do we think supplies the tear gas and other weapons used to suppress protests around the world? Who do we think repeatedly dismantled the economic independence of Central American countries and then left a trail of violence that continues to force thousands to migrate north to our borders for refuge? Refuge that looks like separating children from their parents and throwing refugees into cages and into a system that treats them like criminals? Who do we think has the power and unquestioned ability to intervene in countries and unseat the government when it no longer serves its interests? You can say, um, stop blaming America for everything. Okay, but the problem with that is that you can't boast about being the most powerful country in the world and ignore what that power means and does, especially to sustain itself. A huge part of sustaining that power, especially the economic side of it, has meant doing so at the literal expense of other countries' economies and the lives of their citizens. Thank you for the well-sown Tim's enslaved worker in Bangladesh. And even if anyone wanted to hold the United States accountable the way this country polices other quote third world countries, that's not even possible. Why? Because look at us. In 2019, the United States spent around $732 billion on its military. That's as much as the next eight highest spending countries spent on theirs combined. The United States has over 800 military bases in over 70 countries. That exceeds its two biggest militaristic rivals, China and Russia, by a lot. A lot. And that militarization trickled down to police forces who now have access to tanks and military-grade protective uniforms our doctors are still begging for. Police forces across the country also have access to military-grade weaponry and surveillance tech that is definitely violating civil rights. What we see now in the United States isn't a so-called third world dictatorship. It's a culmination of what this country has built on and has done for decades. 
Let's not forget that one of the biggest blows to civil rights in recent years in this country was from this guy, George W. Bush, whose presidency was recently rebranded as the good old days. Under his administration, we got the Patriot Act, the same Patriot Act that President Barack Obama renewed in 2011. And on May 13th of this year, the Senate also approved powers that allow the CIA and FBI to check our browser histories without a warrant. That happened democratically and by one vote. And well before all of that, we have seen state violence used to suppress movements like the Black Panthers. We have seen state violence used to suppress protests like Kent State or the 1967 Detroit riot. And we have seen how the state comes in too late at best when white civilians in particular extol mass violence against black civilians as we saw in 1921 in Tulsa. Civil liberties have been chiseled away for years, while militarized law enforcement agencies have gained more and more power to complete their directives by whatever means. And so when you get a guy like Donald Trump in office, democratically elected and with an administration of people, which includes the likes of Stephen Miller, the table's already been set with what he can do. And yeah, this country lacks a loyal opposition party because the Democrats think Nancy Pelosi holding a bargain bin Bible is the clapback to Trump the country needed after police forces tear gas peaceful protesters outside a church to make room for a presidential photo op. There is a long history of this government violently suppressing protests, shutting down movements through infiltration, and letting people die because of illness, poverty, and their race. Don't put that on long exploited countries. The blame is solely on this one. That was a lot, I get it. And I actually wanna hear what you have to say. So let us know in the comments, I will try to respond. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon.